here with me today, I have NASA astronaut Mike Fossum, who is a veteran of uh, three space flights. Welcome, Mike. Thank you for coming and coming to talk with us. Basically, he's uh, three space flights. Two of them were aboard the uh, space shuttle, and then one mo more recently was aboard a Soyuz. So he knows what that ride is like, and so he's here to talk to us about that. And actually, today. As of today is exactly one month since you landed, correct? After 167 days in space. That's right, 167 days in space. We landed a month ago exactly, and uh, it's great to be in mission control watching uh, uh, Don and his crew take off and uh, head up to the space station. Don was my backup six months ago when we launched, and so we spent a lot of time training around the globe together, and it's really exciting to be in here this morning with his uh, special guests in the viewing room to watch the launch and kind of relive it for me. And that was an early morning for you, I suppose, huh? <laughs> you bet. It's an early day, but that's okay. All right. Well, um, let's just talk about that uh, launch experience, if you will. Um, let's start by what's your day begin? I mean, how is how is that morning? Well, your, your days really get messed up uh, during that time as you're leading up to the launch because for them, the launch was... Uh, uh, you know, it was night when they launched, roughly, uh, and I, I don't know the local time there. It was about 6.20 in the, in the evening, seven, no, seven, about 7.30 or so, 7.20 in the evening. Anyway, so that they're about 12 hours out from Houston. And they, uh, so this one wasn't too bad. They didn't have to do that much of a sleep shift, but, but they, the, the, the days are just busy, and they'll usually will take a nap because the day ends up being, when they, they launch that time of evening, They'll be really busy late into the night, so they'll take a, a nap before launch, which is a little hard to do, but you are kind of tired from the launch preparations. Um, we go to Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan about two weeks before launch to go through the fit checks and final launch preparations. It's also a, a quarantine period where we're isolated from other people that haven't been screened by doctors to help make sure that we don't launch with a cold or flu or something like that because that would be really miserable and, and could affect the mission. So it's a quarantine period. It's also a preparation period. And it all builds up, uh, you know, to the launch day, uh, which really, you know, gets started in earnest about five hours before launch as you're going through some of the things. There's a, um, a gathering with, um, well, as you uh, leave your room, you sign the door. And we saw the video of the of the guys signing the doors. They left this morning, and uh, Don, in his uh, uh, typical way, he has uh, a lot of fun doing this. Uh, and and it, it's neat to see the history that are on these doors as each person gets to add his signature and the date of the launch uh, to the door. And so these the, the room that you stay in and the door to that room becomes part of the space record which is kind of a neat thing. That must be pretty exciting, and uh, just even just seeing that door, I mean, here we're seeing some footage of that that was taken earlier this morning, but um, well, being and, able and to see some of your other crew member, I mean, your oh. uh, your colleagues, you know, their names up there. You bet, you bet. And so is uh, uh, Mickey and the boys were there with them, and, uh, you know, your, your spouses and families are there uh, as part of that as you're actually signing the door and uh, and then walking out for the there's a ceremonial greeting with a, a, a Russian Orthodox priest who gives you a blessing as you head out the door it's a it's really a special time and the whole the whole process is is just a wash in traditions as you uh, walk out of the building playing the, the music uh, I don't know what that music is but it's really cool and the, the, of course today it was really cold but the family and friends uh, you guests that have come to the other side of the globe are there to uh, to uh, wave you know wave to you and then you finally you get on the buses and you leave the, the quarantine facility what we call the cosmonaut hotel and head out toward the, uh, the the launch facility where we, you know, go through the the final preparations, get in the suits, and we go a, as part of the suit up. Then there's a pressure check of each suit to verify the integrity, and make sure that it's all ready. And this is all part of the part of the process that you go through one after the other, uh, uh, getting through there. And a little bit of an oddity with this is that it actually takes place in front of a large. Um, uh, in a viewing gallery, and so there's uh, family, uh, friends, and sometimes uh, some press that are just a few feet away, you know, watching as we go through this process of inflating the suit to about 40% uh, uh, of regular atmospheric pressure and make sure that it holds uh, that it holds tight. 
and uh, it's uh, I mean there's there's symbolism involved, but it's of course very practical just to make sure there's no problems. And and at this point, they still have time uh, to deal with anything that comes up. Uh, and uh, before you leave there, then there's there is one last opportunity to uh, to talk to your families uh, through the glass, and it's a uh, it's a really special time. And uh, and once that's done, it's time to walk out. And and uh, this is a very you know historic uh, imagery here of the Russian space program is that the whole crew walks out. The head of the, the, head of the Russian space agency, uh, Mr. Popovkin, is there, and uh, the, so the crew checks in and basically says, "Hey, boss, we're a." Uh, crew is uh, prepared and ready to go and it's uh, it's really a neat thing of course the family friends and uh, members of the press are watching from uh, from alongside there and uh, it's it's kind of an iconic image so uh, here on the bus here when when you do leave and you're heading out that way what are your thoughts well, your thoughts are you know all the years of training and uh, you know part of you is, is still coming to grips with the fact that we're we're finally here we're finally heading to the launch pad of course, six months ago, you know, uh, you know, American Don Pettit was my backup, and he went out all the way to the pad with me. And, and uh, you know, realistically, once you get suited up, you know who's going that day. But uh, as you step up to the rocket then, of course, a fueled rocket is different than an inert one that's laying on the ground. It's hissing, breathing. There's this, uh, you know, uh, kind of a, a fog associated with the cold cryogenic fuel tanks that's, uh, that's rolling off of the vehicle. Uh, and it's uh, it's really neat as you, you you stand on the steps here right at the foot of the rocket you you go up uh, about 20 or so steps on this ladder to get to the elevator that takes you to the top and it's one last pause waving back at the uh, the managers the family don't go out to the rocket with you but uh, you're just kind of waving goodbye and then you get on a very tiny little elevator that takes you up to the top. You know, the, the, uh, for me, it was it was striking because the Soyuz rocket is uh, is significantly smaller than the space shuttle, with which I had the most experience. And I remember the first time I saw the, the full-up Soyuz you know, rocket spacecraft, I said, wow, that, that really seems different. And of course it is, but it, it's really good at hauling you know, people and a few hundred pounds of equipment. Uh, very efficient for that, but you're in there tight. It's your hip to hip, shoulder to shoulder in the uh, in the capsule, the descent module. As the rocket starts to roar to life, it seems to take a long time as the engines come up to full speed, and uh, and and everything kicks in. And then it, it uh, the whole way of, of being on the pad is different than uh, than what we're used to. But it it's, it's a gentle lift off, and it it doesn't have. Uh, I mean, it's it's fairly smooth. It doesn't have the kind of popping and crackling that we're used to from solid rocket boosters. Um, and uh, and it you know it accelerates smoothly off the pad. Uh, it's a lot quieter inside than you would think. You know, you think looking at all this its flames and rockets that it ought to be really noisy and, and stuff, but you just don't notice that there's a dull roar back there, but it's it's not as bad. And th as the rocket starts to climb, of course, you're burning fuel, and so the acceleration increases, and it, you get pushed back into the seats with more and more force. Uh, at about two minutes, these there's some boosters that are strapped on, and they burn out and fall away. And it's a it's a very subtle change. You feel a little drop off in the uh, in the in the acceleration forces. Uh, the the big change comes at about five minutes when the first or it, they call it stage two or second stage, but it's really the first main rocket body. When it burns out and separates for momentarily, there's you're in weightless. All of a sudden, this this force it's a and I don't remember the exact number. It's about three Gs is pushing on you, and then uh, very abruptly that force stops and you're kind of lurched in the in the straps and then the n stage three the next rocket kicks in and boom pushes you back into the seat and uh, as you continue on the way so the whole process just takes t it's about nine minutes from sitting still you know on the step of, Kaz of Kazakhstan to being in orbit and it, it's uh, it's all very fast uh, you know it, it takes a little bit longer than the shuttle is about eight and a half minutes uh, and so this is about nine minutes, and uh, but once they get to orbit, it's still a very busy time because you're uh, you're busy. I mean, they're st they're still going through some of the vehicle checks and some of the the uh, orbit maneuvers uh, that are associated with uh, with just starting the whole uh, chase down, you know, of the space station. Well, talk about that a little bit. Um, what what 
why is that important? I mean, how and why does it take you two days to get caught up to the International Space right. Station? Right. Well, it's 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 just part of the design, really, on on how we we just chase it down. Uh, it, we intentionally launch into an orbit that's just a little below the space station, which means we go around the Earth a little faster. So we're literally chasing it down. This morning, as the as the uh, Soyuz was launching from Kazakhstan, the uh, space station was over South America. And, and of course, that looks wrong because you think that the space station should be coming overhead and we should be going straight to it, but that's just not the way it works. And it, it by having a, a difference, it, it just allows us to kind of methodically uh, uh, maneuver and, and join up to. And so we launched into an orbit that's just a little under the space station, so we're going a little faster. And so we'll be chasing it down. And docking takes place just about 50 hours after launch so we'll be docking you know central time it'll be a it'll be about 9 15 or so friday morning for the actual docking well well that sounds very exciting and so um also just something else you know so you you launch on the soyuz but also while you were there aboard the international space station serving as the commander you actually watched the launch as well so tell me what is that experience to knowing that hey i'm you know the rest of my crew's coming and what is that like well, we had uh, we had some delay in that. There was some, you know, a little bit of space drama uh, going on for us when the, the Russian Progress cargo ship uh, did not reach orbit in August. It, it uh, they had a malfunction and it uh, it went down. And that rocket is basically the same rocket that carries humans up on the Soyuz spacecraft. Uh, and so that del that that changed things. Uh, the uh, uh, Ron Garin, uh, uh, Sasha, and Andre. Uh, they extended their stay by just a little bit, and when it was time for them to come home, then we just had a crew of three for a couple of months, and where uh, 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 Dan, Anton, and Anatoly were uh, uh, originally scheduled to be up there, um, you know, two months ago, just a very short gap, and in, instead we had a longer time with just three people, so it was really busy. The space station takes a certain amount of care and feeding, and we were working hard to keep up with the science program and keep everything on track. Which is the we three could. and not the six that you originally well, we were shorthanded, absolutely. So. so it was it was a very busy time, but you know, we were by then we were, you know, fully up to speed because we'd been in space for a few months. So we were ready for that and it was it was a challenge getting everything ready uh, for uh, Dan Burbank and his crewmates to arrive, you know, it, late as, as, if you will, and, and they arrived really 6 days before we left. And so we had a very short uh, overlap time or handover time. It was really busy. Uh, we, we uh, uh, Dan Burbank and I joke about not sleeping during that time because there was just so much to hand over, so much to talk about. But it was exciting when, as we were preparing, and uh, we were actually sending down videos to help with uh, the training or the handover uh, of the different things that we do. The, the on, on the space station, part of it's the normal, you know, just cleaning and cleaning filters and, and uh, water samples and also payload operations and different stuff. So it was really neat to, uh, to when it was finally launch day, as we gathered uh, in the uh, the aft end of the, the, of the, uh, the U.S. laboratory at a computer screen where they were uplinking, uh, streaming the video up to watch them. And so we're cheering. And of course, uh, you know, that was just, wow, that was just five weeks ago. It's hard to believe. Uh, and they were, they launched in a blizzard. It was unbelievable conditions. Yeah, a little different than your your conditions, since you launched on June seventh in the summer, correct? We launched in the summertime. <laughs> it was it was it was nice. It was a little warm, but it was nice. And I I couldn't believe, uh, you know, what uh, the conditions were like when they launched. But it was, you know, the today's launch, of course, was beautiful. It, it was cold, you know, but clear and looked really uh, looked great. Great. Well, thanks so much for sharing with us. Again, um, you've been sharing with us since you, before you left, and you're still sharing with us, but uh, you've been blogging. And so for those of you who uh, want to hear more about um, Mike Fossum's experience there, he talks about the launch. He also talks about watching the yeah. launch, waiting for the launch, the delay of the launch. <laughs> <laughs> um, all of those things you can see at um, his on his blog called titled uh, Living the Dream, where he chronicled his space flight experience. And you can get to that at uh, www.nasa.gov or uh, I'm sorry blogs.nasa.gov okay thanks again for coming for uh, to talk with us and I you know again it, it is a very exciting time and it's nice to be able to see that excitement and how are you feeling now being back I mean just only a month oh, I, <laughs> How's I, Earth treating I feel you? great you know it's uh, we go right now going through medical testing um, to a lot of what we 
a lot of the science that we do involves us actually serving as the guinea pig for different uh, muscle and bone studies. And so going through that and rehabilitation. Very interesting. So I guess we can still follow you because you, you, are, you have been tweeting. So perhaps you're, you'll share some of those experiences as well of how he gets uh, adjusted back to Earth. You bet. And th that is on uh, www.twitter.com slash astro underscore Aggie. <laughs> Thanks again for coming, Mike. You bet. Thanks, Amiko. Thank Good you. to be here. And happy holidays to you and yours. You too. And uh, thanks for everybody for watching NASA TV. It's a great time in the uh, space program here where we've got the next the next crew heading up to the space station to get back up to a full crew of six. And uh, we're cheering them and supporting them as best we can from here in Houston and around the globe. Thanks for joining in.